Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are building the city of Shorewood in Clearwater County. Uh, in the previous episode, we focused a lot on this rural area, and I have uh, decided to, to move back to Shorewood today, and for good reason. There's a great deal of residential demand now that we've built this, uh, this factory over here for the J.A. Brown Company. So if you recall, two episodes ago, Emily Brown and Jackson Anderson Brown uh, decided to expand and use TIF funding uh, from the county and a, a, a bit of a sweetheart land deal to found Shorewood. And the city started to grow a little bit uh, to, in response to the needs for this, uh, this particular factory area. However, things are going to really expand today and we are going to focus on rapid expansion in this area. In addition, we are going to build the centerpiece of the community which is going to be a church and modular cemetery. So I'm really excited to get into that, but first I want to make a couple of fixes from the previous build, and it's really naming. So Cape Rouge and, and Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> so pretty, pretty simple things to fix. And you'll notice we had a little bit of a fire while I loaded in. I guess that's uh, the usual. Uh, that said, there is a couple of things that I've done uh, before this episode off camera that I wanted to make you aware of. I've done a little bit of mod tuning, and I, I was noticing that I was getting some frame dips, and uh, in the Discord server, a few members in there uh, mentioned that maybe the issue is my, my tree mod. So I had unlimited trees revisited, and I moved to Tree Anarchy, which has improved my FPS by about 10. So that's not insignificant, and as a result, I've gone that way. Uh, I've also added uh, adaptive prop uh, visibility distance, uh, adaptive prop distance. You can see it just kind of reduces that popping effect uh, when you when you switch between the, the high and the low uh, polygon models uh, loads. So I'm I'm pretty pleased with with the changes. I can feel the fluidity, and that means that uh, I'm happier. And it has some other unique things too, like tree snapping uh, works for this. So I know I had problems with a key that had a little base where you could prop a, prop, snap a tree on. With this, I can, I can now do that. So, all good things. So, to start out, I want to think a little bit about where this church would go. And uh, I think that this is the logical terminus for the church. Uh, so, one of the reasons that I think this church is really important for this community is I kind of haphazardly placed this cemetery in the previous episode. There is a need for death care here, uh, but I, I think that, uh, particularly in these small communities, a church is really a gathering place, a center place, a centerpiece, uh, at least here in the U.S. And uh, you would see many communities develop around a church or a church spring up in a community rather naturally. Uh, so even if you're not religious in one of these communities, you might still go there for some of the events that take place, uh, and uh, it would be a burial grounds as well. So. I, we are going to modify our grid a bit, take this road out and use this as our vista point for our church. So we're gonna go in here and I've, I've already selected the church. It's the St. Mary Church. It's a great asset. And I think it's gonna fit really well here. Look at that. It's this red brick church. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And that's something I'm, I'm really excited to bring into the community. And I think that the residents here would also be very excited about it. This would be the, the centerpiece, the pride and joy of the community. Uh, but we're not going to just leave it here at some, at some road. We've got some work to do. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to steal this parking lot, which there's some lumpies there. That's, that's, that's unacceptable. We'll fix that and then we're going to steal it and uh, clone it and move it over. It's not perfect, but it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, I this is yeah. Uh, I, I, I really I really dislike the way that this looks <laughs> because of the bumps in there. But I can't let perfect be the enemy of good. We're gonna just accept a little bit of craziness, but it's significantly better. We're gonna move this parking lot though over to the church. And I'm not sure 100% where I want to place this just yet, so I'm just going to leave the asset there. So the modular uh, cemetery pack that I have is by a creator called Bach Tuberoke. 
And uh, so when you when you search for this in here, it's it's uh, B T B, and it's really a fantastic asset set. So it gives you everything from a funeral hall, which is basically a church, a body collection area, which will act uh, basically as a cemetery. It'll collect bodies. You can empty it. It has a crematorium, mausoleums, and, and, and it even has props for graves, and you have the ability to place these all by yourself. So I'm really excited to, 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 to build this cemetery. I think it's gonna be a really unique centerpiece of the community, and where we start with this is you need it to be a park. So we're gonna paint a park area. I'm gonna make this fairly large for the time being. And we are going to need some sort of road through here. And I want this to be fairly minimalist uh, in terms of uh, its, its aesthetic. So I could certainly go with this rural road and send that back there. I think that there would also be a logic in going with just a, a gravel road. Let's start out with our country road and we will uh, we'll take it from there. So with a cemetery, I would expect that there's a way to get in and out that might be the exact same uh, entry point in, in, in a cemetery. Uh, but generally, I would expect to see at least two. Um, that said, I'm not a cemetery planner. So <laughs> we're, all, we're also going to freestyle a bit and do what makes us, what makes us feel, feel happy. So we've got this now. When we go in here, uh, I think it would be good to, to start to, to set up an entry point. So this is another thing that I did. I, I changed the toolbar. Uh, there were some issues with the toolbar that I had. Thought it might be nice to make a change. So there's gonna be a lot of additions in this mod list and subtractions. And uh, I will, I will uh, get that reflected. So for this, it comes with these really nice stone fences. They are kind of a bear to work with. I will be upfront with you. Uh, you, if you're gonna use these, you're gonna wanna use prop uh, line tool, and turn it on fence, and then you're gonna also want to turn on anarchy if you don't want to go crazy, and that's the anarchy within prop line tool. Then you kind of just have to go back and forth. So we are going to we're gonna freestyle with this, uh, which is something that I don't routinely do, but sometimes it's it's good to do so. Um, so I've practiced this a little bit, but for this particular build. I know that uh, there are certain builds that when I when I approach them and I practice them extensively, I end up in a situation where I like my practice build more than the one I build on camera, and then I redo it. <laughs> so, you know what, I'm thinking that maybe we're going a little bit too extreme now. So uh, we're gonna keep this to be about, we'll, we'll say twice the size of the church grounds. And actually, now that I'm now that I'm saying it, I'm realizing just how much space this is actually going to take up, and it's going to need to be significant. So, yeah, let's make this a little bit bigger. Uh, this is yeah, this is a this is a tough one. You know, it's not like this cemetery here where it's tight and compact. Just for an example, so we're going to come and figure out the size of our assets. So we're probably not gonna use these. Uh, this is not really common in the Midwest. I'd expect to see this in the South, and maybe in France or something, but, but not here. This sort of thing, maybe. This, absolutely. So there are a couple of ways that we could go about this. First of all, we need to leave enough space in between the headstones uh, for where we would expect the tombs to be. And then we might even want to use prop line tool, turn off our fence tool. Just go ahead and draw this. Actually, fences might help. And then we'll come in here, and I wonder if we just add increase our spacing a bit. There we go. So the reason why I like this is it's going to give me the ability to place pads in between. So I think that is about what I'm going to do. And then I am going to move this. We'll have an entry point over here, and we're just going to head straight up. We're going to have, we're going to call the socket out inside of there. And then use our walking pads to make a, uh, to, to basically make what would be our, you know, our path to the, the, the to the grave sites that you would you would expect to be used if uh, if they were a, a funeral or something of that nature. So, 
Okay, so one of the things that's going to be a, a factor in this, in the size of this, is going to be actually our fence line. So we're going to select this, and really that's determining where we're ending up, for better or for worse. So this is one of those scenarios where I haven't, I haven't used procedural objects in my builds. This might be, this might be what convinces me to do so. Uh, I, the reason I haven't done it is I've been really reluctant to go that down that path because I'm afraid I'll get lost in it. Uh, not not just in the functionality of procedural objects, but also in just like letting perfect be the enemy of good all the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to know yourself as a person and as a player. Uh, so that's why I, I, I know that people have wondered why I haven't uh, I haven't done that. And that's that's the primary reason. That said, it would be really nice to have a cleaner job here. I also think I haven't done all that bad. And we can use our landscaping to clean this up a bit. We could have a, a walking path off here, but truthfully, this isn't really a walkable community at this point, as, as, as much as that pains me to say. It's just not. So, um, we, you got to kind of accept the realities of the community that you're in. So, we're going to reorient those. And what we're going to do now is place some paths down for our cemetery. So, I'm going to go and we're going to grab our park path and see how that works for us. I'm going to turn off all of my guidelines. Uh, so one of the features uh, that you frequently see in a cemetery is there'll be a pattern, but the pattern is not necessarily super fluid. And I'm going to use the, the pavement path, I think. It's going to be a cleaner look for in here. So the one thing about the props in here is they're going to have these lights. And if I were to use uh, the park life paths, they have a propless version. And I think I use that over in Ashland. Uh, I, I'm, I, part of me wants to go that route, but part of me doesn't as well, just because I, I think that it, it just doesn't blend quite as well. So we will steer clear of it for now. We certainly might do something a bit different in the future in this area. I do think this cemetery is going to grow and expand, and it won't be just what it is right now, which is going to be pretty Spartan in terms of its design. Okay, so that for this to actually function, we need to have some sort of facility to process the bodies because these are props. So, you know, as much as I, I like the idea of placing mausoleums, for instance, we are absolutely going to place some. I think that they give this a great deal of character. It, it's not going to do a lot for us in terms of actually improving this. Ah, and it wants a gate. So we do have the invisible park path gate, and I think that we're going to use that. So this will spur me to, to delete that, and this will indeed change the path that I'm using. So I, I'm i wondering if this gravel path is a better fit because this will not have lights. And I really don't want lights showing up within the cemetery. That's just not a very natural look. I do think that this looks better, so we're gonna go with it. So this is, we're reusing that 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 same uh, gateless entryway that we used in Ashland. And I think it's gonna be a really good fit in this particular area. So I noticed that there's an excess node in here and it's kind of messing things up for me. So I'm gonna remove that node. Oh, not possible to remove that one. We can get rid of that one. Okay, so that cleaned things up a bit for us. We'll get back to our back to our props. And what, what I want to start out with is just the grieve, grieving park. I think that that would be a good place to start. We'll place that right in the center. Let's, let's take a look at this asset to further understand how it should be placed. I think we just want to pull this in a bit. There we go. So we do have, uh, you know, you could, this is a modular asset, so we could certainly extend it out if we wanted to. And we'll just take a look at it. We're not, we're not gonna, we're unlikely to do that. You can see how you could do that if you wanted to, and then use move it to rotate it around and, and make the path that you want to make. But 
I think for the size of this, we're probably okay with just this little tiny area to sit and reflect on your on, on your loved one. Uh, so we will keep that here. We're gonna have a couple of uh, large mausoleums by the main entrance way. You know, this would be you know where the town founders would potentially have their uh, their mausoleums. And truthfully, we might actually maybe we'll give them their own private places in the corners. And then we'll send a path over to these mausoleums. This is one of those things where it starts snapping to the side of this that really bugs me. So the one way that I believe I'll be able to resolve this is to go in here, use my brush, and actually just eliminate that. So it's still a path. I don't know that there's going to be a significant amount of utilization here, so I'm not. maybe I shouldn't stress over it. Okay, so we've got that now, and now I would like to place some cemetery uh, uh, plots. So we're going to go back in there. We'll place some headstones. And now that I'm thinking about the size of this, it's, it's really got me of the mindset that maybe we don't need to, to worry so much uh, about using the line tool we're going to be just fine the only thing I don't love is if I don't vary this up a bit I'm, I'm going to end up in a situation where everything looks really uniform and I guess that's where maybe landscaping will, will clean things up a bit so now at this point I'm trying to think about where the where this would line up in the cemetery, uh, in terms of the headstones, where would they, where would the bodies actually be? So I'm saying that they're facing what, what is would be north on the screen right now. Uh, so we're gonna leave enough space for a coffin, and then I'll space this out a bit, and then we're gonna place some landscaping in here. And I, I think that we're gonna try to be very tasteful about this. We'll have some to frame this space. There's more room on this side to place that, so we're going to need to think about that. We could probably go for something like this if we wanted a significant amount of privacy. Maybe that's not necessarily what we need. All right, there we go. So just adding some shade throughout and some privacy. Hang a bit just on the outside to make this feel like a more secluded and private space. We're also going to add a couple just kind of on the outside to really emphasize that this is a, a quiet private space. And I may even go ahead and add one. No, I, I was thinking of potentially adding more throughout. These are just really large, maybe you know, perhaps bigger than I would I would expect them to be. Could potentially have a couple of small signature trees though. There we go. And that's a nice serene environment. And when you look at this, it just feels significantly better than the cemeteries that we normally see in the game. Now that said, this is not functional. And the only way that we can make it functional is to add a, a service building to this. So those service buildings, like I mentioned, are either the body collection, which actually will, will do the, the storage of the bodies, uh, which is, is kind of a, a unique workaround. And then there's the crematorium. I think for uh, the case of this build, I'm going to add the crematorium and kind of just set it back here. At least now we do have death care. And I will extend a road out here for the time being. Use that as my guide. And then we'll get rid of that. So we've created a little campus here of sorts. And uh, I think that's a good, a good, a good fit. There we go. I'm just going to fill in around here. I'm guessing that they are not overly concerned about the amount of impervious that they have. And they would be very excited to pave their entire lot and never worry about it again. In fact, uh, for this building, I would, I would absolutely expect that to be the case. And these trees would not exist. <laughs> so... Now we're off to the church, and a church needs a, a very intense amount of parking. 
So uh, I think, you know, we could certainly place this. I've been using that a lot, that asset, and not going through and making our parking lot roads. Uh, that said, I don't, I don't even know that this would be uh, striped. This might just be an empty lot. Uh, but we're, I want to see how this fits in with these country roads. And yeah, it kind of creates a, a strange aesthetic. So I do think for the time being, we're going to continue to use this asset, which does blend very nicely into these areas. And we're going to have a lot of parking, for better or for worse. This is, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've certainly worked on a couple of church projects, and each of those projects... I was surprised by the amount of parking required to make it work. And truthfully, the church wants there to be enough parking for all of the all of their parishioners. They are not looking to have people uh, say they can't come to church because there's no parking. So generally, at least in my experience, they are fairly open to discussing these sorts of matters. So I think I'm going to use Move It to actually mirror these just because they're getting a bit messy. That's a lot better. So we're gonna add that there, and then I wanna surface paint around here. And then we are gonna do a, a very good job of landscaping around the church, because I do think that that would be important to the church here. This is one of those situations where I wish that I was north-south and not that kind of diagonal on this map. It would make it a lot easier to use the surface painter, but we have the directionality that we have. We're just gonna let that be. And let's let's put a fence around this. And truthfully, I think this park life fence might be a really good fit. So we're just gonna add that here and use that as a tool to create some separation in between the church and everything else happening in this area. This will be kind of a private area back here. This will not be the area where uh, people congregate after a church service. It'll be the, the area, maybe a little orchard, where the pastor or priest would would uh, would go uh, in their off time. So that got a bit finicky, and I had to play with it a bit to make it work. Uh, so one of the nice things about this particular build and some synergy maybe that we're having with these parking lots is that there's a door right here and a door right here. So it would make perfect sense that the parking is on this side. You can walk right in. I guess there's a door over here too, but to me, this they're, they're identical and, and I'm going crazy. So <laughs> I think they're... No, no, there's two doors. One door, two door, three door. One door, two doors. It's not identical. All right, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> or, or maybe I am and, uh, you know... It'll be okay. So uh, now that we've got that, I do want to put some uh, landscaping behind the church. And again, I think we're going to mirror what's happening at the at the, at the cemetery. We'll use these same uh, red cherry trees, and then add some flowers along the, uh, along this this area back here. So the interesting thing about churches is that they are institutional uses, and generally, they can go anywhere. So um, that's why you'll see churches everywhere from residential neighborhoods to industrial parks to strip malls. Many zoning codes do not have limitations on where a church can be placed. And there are reasons for that. Some of them are legal. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get into a legal battle with a church and uh, infringe upon their rights. At least here in the U.S., that is something that, you know, the Constitution is very protective of that. So you do not at all want to infringe upon a church's rights. Uh, so that is, is something that, uh, that, that basically has, has made its way into zoning codes. And I feel like those blue flowers were inappropriate with these red trees. We might just leave it. If we're going to do anything, it should be something a little less intrusive than that. I, I am having fun with this build. I, this is, you know, I, I don't often focus on the details of these in this in this specific way, but it's really fun to do it every now and then. And if you just want a, a change of pace, I would highly recommend you think, give a lot of thought to some of these places. 
uh, they are important to people and uh, they would as a result have quite a bit of detail and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uniqueness so to me it's kind of one of those fun things to, 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 to do every now and then is to really dig into a build and that's what I'm doing here okay and I'm gonna line it the front basically all sides of, of this with landscaping, which I think would be pretty reasonable, something that you might expect to see in this area. I think that we could honestly ex expect one more tree over here as well, behind this mausoleum, providing a bit more shade and privacy in this area. There we go. Now, this, to me, feels like something that the community would care about and would mean a lot to everyone who lives there. Uh, regardless of whether or not this is a place that they go to. Um, I, I think that there are certain buildings that, that hold that uh, mystique in people's minds, and uh, I think it's important to build them in these cities uh, if you want them to feel like they're alive. So this is a build that, uh, just bluntly, uh, Emily and Jackson Anderson Brown don't much care about. Uh, all of that said, this is one that is going to mean a lot uh, for this city. Uh, Jackson and, and, and Emily, they've got some ideas for the town that really don't involve any of this. Uh, that said, we will get into that in the next one because what we're going to do now is try to remedy some of this demand that we're seeing. We have had uh, very high residential demand for a number of episodes at this point, and that all comes down to but we have a lot of businesses. <laughs> so I want to look at this and give some thought to, to what would be needed to, to meet the demand here. We're going to go 17 up because it'll divide this approximately in half. And we're going to just repeat this, this block pattern that we have. I do think that we're going to try to get this to turn into the block pattern to make it fit in. We use our curved road tool to make that connection. And then up here, so up here, I think again, we are going to, I'll, I'll give an extra, one extra tile buffer. These are gonna be irregular blocks and that's okay. We'll get some bigger lots through there. It'll feel a little bit more organic and natural. And I did set this cemetery to empty. And the primary reason for that is I want to eliminate it. We don't need this anymore. We have this, and once we have our connections made through here, we're going to see some fairly significant gains in terms of population. So for whatever reason, oh, it's not whatever reason, it is power lines. So we, we don't have zoning right there, and that's all the power lines. I think we might leave that. I think that might be a unique, a unique aesthetic. Maybe that gets uh, improved over time, but for the time being, we're gonna live with it. So we are gonna set this back. We're gonna have commercial uses buffering the residential uses along our main drag here. And then we're gonna basically go through and fill this in with residential uses. I do think that we need to have some center uh, centerpiece park in this area though, so we're gonna probably develop that and some of the land that's less desirable, truthfully, that's the kind of land that a city gets left with. <laughs> so they might get some remnant parcels from this uh, highway build uh, and then uh, request additional parcels as this develops. And uh, this isn't a, this currently is not a, a an incorporated area, but as the population grows here, we got 177. Once we get to about a thousand, we will think about incorporating this. Uh, that is kind of what I would expect to happen. And we are going to bring the homes right up to here and really set this whole area up to develop. Now I want to go through and make sure we have our water pipes and then I want to think a little bit about the themes that are in this area. So I mentioned in the previous episode that I wanted to set some themes. We, I don't think that we're going to wholesale eliminate what's going on here, but I do want to, to leave the ability to have a, a little bit more variation. and. To do that, we will add a theme to the mix here. Uh, but before I forget, I do want to shrink St. Mary's down. We have this park. So we'll just 
get that to conform to the area of the church approximately more or less and the cemetery grounds. Now, depending on the denomination, you might see a couple of different things at this church. Um, so if it were Catholic, maybe you'd expect to see a parishioner's house or uh, I guess a, a, a nunnery. Uh, if, uh, if it were you know Lutheran, you might expect to see you know a pastor's house. Um, you know, and any number of other denominations that are out there, non-Christian faiths, um, you, you might expect to see different things. So I, I, I would certainly think about that. For this, the community is so small, we're going to say that whatever denomination this is, uh, they are living within the community and uh, apparently going to a church that has no light. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully eventually we get there. We speed this up just a little bit, let things develop out while we think about our building themes. So we're going to go into here and do our theme manager and enable theme management for this district. So this will do a couple of things that's going to restrict us to our brick downtown and our historic American. Uh, we also have post-war housing and uh, uh, you know big suburb, which I think could be a good look here. So since this is a bit later than Ashland, I'm going to start enabling some older or some some themes that have some newer buildings within them so we can go into the theme manager and i can show you some of what's in here so post-war housing for instance if we take this and only show what is included uh, it's boring house <laughs> and then we've got some you know cape cods um some small brick colonials so uh here and honestly, the University City wouldn't be bad either. And I might enable that one. Uh, the Victorians, I think we're going to hold off from those here. I think that we're going to have a build where we focus extensively on these Victorians. We had them a bit in Belmont and they look nice mixed in, but I feel like you need a bit more. So the International, this is another one that we're not going to use. European suburbia we could use that might look okay mixed in here so I think we're gonna hold off on using DK post-war uh, for slums it's interesting I don't know that I would call these slums not all of them anyway but I think that that's the way some of them were identified as I think the shotgun um, maybe makes it a bit weird but we, we don't want that here necessarily brick attached is what's gonna be in our commercial area uh, and if we go up to you know uh, multi multi-family then we'll get some of that there as well big suburb I added this as well these this is that the, the pack from the big suburbs um, series and it's it's a great one uh, auto oriented commercial we aren't going to use that here right now we may add a trailer park but probably not here and then American eclectic again is a, a nice theme pack there are some things about this that I don't love and we're going to get rid of those so we have all of these construction homes I'm just gonna deselect them the thing I don't like about it is it starts to look like trailers and I think the game plan with this the, the construction pack is that if these are in there you're gonna level up and you'll move past this the problem is it, it, to me it just ends up looking like I, like I mentioned like trailers and I, I just don't love it. And then we have our Chicago kind of split level ranches and uh, some of the, you know, welcome to my humble garage type homes. So <laughs> we'll have a nice mixture of those in here. And I think it'll give a bit more variety than Ashland and show that this is more of a contemporary city. Now this is exactly what I'm talking about with the American Eclectic, what I dislike about it. So we might have a couple of those spring up and truthfully, that makes me wonder if maybe we should be refraining from using that in this area altogether and uh, having a, a few blocks dedicated exclusively to that particular set of buildings. So I'm playing whack-a-mole with the construction. And I, I, think I, got, I think I got all of them and, and no more should come up. So we should be okay now. And look at this again, we got a problem with workers. Not enough workers. So let's 
take a break from thinking about that. We gotta think about city services in this area. We added, we've got healthcare, police, fire. We don't have any schools. So we are gonna add schools here. Our capacity is not very good right now. So what I think we're gonna do is add in a school district site and they're gonna take whatever land they have available to them. And that's likely gonna be over here. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna centrally locate this. So I think we will use a more contemporary looking elementary school over here. I, I'm gonna turn all of my anarchies off so I don't mess everything up. So this is a much more contemporary looking school. This may be the one that we used in Belmont. It may be, and that's fine. Then again, we need parking. And we're going to extend this road down a bit, have this turn back around, and that will disconnect all of our power to this area, I'm fairly certain. So <laughs> we'll want to make sure that we fix that right away. Very good. So here I am going to again go and use the surface painter and clean up some of this mess that we've created bad and then I do want to go through here and add some fencing as well this is an elementary school so you'd expect that you know uh, you'd want some a degree of, uh, of privacy for the children and safety and security and the fence would provide that so for this I am going to turn prop anarchy back on I will turn my angle on it's kind of snap here there we go. So we've got a nice, safe, and secure place for the children. And now we need some landscaping. We will go ahead and, uh, you know, leave a couple of spots for shade, but kids need some room to run and play. So we're gonna try to be respectful of that need. There we go. So, you know, it, it's, it gives a bit of privacy and I might extend this down. Initially, I was gonna leave some space here, but I think it's fine. We'll line the whole thing up with trees. Give the kids a, a, a degree of privacy. And then in here, I think we're going to have a, a couple of signature trees in front of the school. Really large trees. Maybe really medium sized trees. <laughs> we'll just, we'll call that good. I'm feeling good about that. So now we have a uh, legitimate elementary school. I think we're gonna we're gonna skip out on the high school for now. So we should probably provide some bus route. So I don't know which school district this would be a part of. I think it would be a really bad bus trip for anybody. So this is kind of one of those unfortunate things that I feel bad about, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna create a bus route over to Belmont. And that will be we'll change that to a school bus. Let's circulate this through the city. But this, this community is just not big enough to warrant a high school. And truthfully, Belmont's not either. So maybe they have some sort of combined school district thing going on where they uh, basically where, where they could have their own elementary schools, they, sh they share a high school. So I wanted this route to be nice and make sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, without adding a stop onto the main drag, it's not going to let me do that. Unless, of course, just start from the other side over here. So now I've got this nice and centrally located, and we're just going to take this right over to the high school over here. And then we'll connect back up here. So we'll want to take a look at this bus route. So it's the Shorewood Belmont School Flyer. We are going to just let that uh, do what it's going to do. And I noticed something over here while we were in the, the white out, whited out view, and that is we've got a couple of homes popped up here in this parking lot. That That's not what we're supposed to do. So we will fix that significantly better once these are gone. Go away. Go away. There we go. <laughs> All right, feeling feeling good. Uh, and while we're over here, 
want to see if the, the new mod will let me do this. It claims to do it. It being placing this in here. Oh, oh, here's what it is, I think. That put tree snapping. It does work. Look at that. So this is what the new tree anarchy does. That is that is great. And we're gonna put something a little bit nicer in there. And of course, now that I got rid of that tree, nothing's gonna fit in there ever again. <laughs> so. There we go. And maybe it's just this asset that I don't love. Maybe I should just go with something that's already over here. Provide some shade as you look out across the water. Yeah, that's nice. That is a really neat asset. I, I'm really, I'm really happy that, that we were finally able to make this work. Uh, that's, that's a good addition to Belmont. And it's nice to see Belmont. It's been a little while. It's a nice little community. It's got some issues. Long block lengths, but for the most part, really a nice little community. All right, so we're going to come back over here. We are growing some. I really dislike this power line, but I do think that it, it, it could happen. So what we're going to do to, I guess, uh, to make this feel a bit more reasonable. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> so if I had this snapping on, it'll actually snap right up there. So that's, that's funny. I think we're just going to add some grass down here. Uh, underneath here. I don't I don't know who would be keeping this up, but it certainly wouldn't be the property owners. I don't think they'd be very interested in this. Uh, maybe some would. And you'll get a couple that maintain it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a lot of school buses. <laughs> We're gonna take that down. We'll take it down to two. We don't we don't need a <laughs> whatever this is uh, of school buses. Okay, so now we've got this this housing. It's it's a bit more varied than it has been in some of the other communities. You see here that there's this house that's nothing like the other houses that it's near. Uh, this right here is a duplex, even though it's showing up as one. Let's let's fix this. Interesting. I don't exactly. So I've got a couple of these that have more than one home. So I just needed to add in that. So I applied custom settings and now this will show up as a, as a two unit, which is, it's it's better. Uh, it's a little extra density in this area. So that is a positive thing. Uh, I wanna add some landscaping through here and try to make this, again, feel a little bit more alive. And then I think that we, uh, we're, we're probably gonna be in a pretty good spot for today. That said, We've got some significant things to focus on soon. And as this city grows into its own, we're gonna to want to, to start thinking about some other city services that it might need as well. And I think we're gonna hold off. Uh, I'm gonna paint the park district, but we're not gonna we're not gonna actually get to the park today. But this happens from time to time. You'll see Parkland reserved, and I think we're gonna reserve it in two locations. Uh, we'll have a riverside park and then another park. That's not very much parkland, truthfully, uh, for the size of the community that this could become. So uh, reserving this little bit here, not, not, the, not, the, not the biggest deal in the world. So Smith City Park, Brown City Park. <laughs> and let's, let's uh, leave the jury out on that one. Uh, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come to that in the future. I think we're in a good spot today, though. I, I think uh, I'm seeing something here. Oh, that's pretty sad, uh, but we'll catch it in the city tour.
All right, so Shorewood is growing. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did hit the like button, if you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, if you want to be notified when I release the videos, hit the notification icon. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.